Well, President Joe Biden campaigned briefly in Tampa on Tuesday where he criticized Florida's new six-week ban on abortion, which becomes law this coming week. He linked former President Trump and his appointments to the U.S. Supreme Court to the overturning of Roe v. Wade. That led to decisions here in Florida and around the country severely limiting access to abortion. Next week, one of the nation's most extreme anti-abortion law will take effect here in Florida. It's criminalizing reproductive health care from before women even know whether they're pregnant. I mean, this is bizarre. I can put you can put a doctor in prison if she takes care of a patient. You know, this extreme Florida law is going to impact four million, four million women in the state of Florida. Florida is one of the 20 front one states in America where America you can't get access you need for care. This adds up to one in three women throughout the United States of America have this limitation. For 50 years, the court ruled that there was a fundamental constitutional right to privacy. But two years ago, that was taken away. Let's be real clear. There's one person responsible for this nightmare, and he's acknowledged and he brags about it, Donald Trump. In fact, Trump's bragged about it overturning Roe v. Wade which meant there's no federal right. No decision can be made. All those decisions are made at the state level. A lot of people don't even know that and don't focus on it. So every state can make a decision. Well, you know, now Trump says the law is, quote, working the way it's supposed to. Trump goes on to say individual state laws are working, his words, brilliantly. Brilliantly. It's a six-week ban in Florida. It's really brilliant, isn't it? Even before women know they're pregnant. Is that brilliant? So, Mitch, uh, you were there, right? Yeah. Uh, so, uh, President Biden's campaign opened a field office, is opening a field office uh, here in Hillsborough County. Uh, so, does that mean that with uh, Biden's appearance here and that the field office is opening, that Florida is in play? I don't think so. Um, this field office thing, they're really blowing it up. Look, they have a field office every four years in office. They usually have more than one. I mean, so I saw they were doing this, oh, what, two days after the president was here. Look, the president's um, appearance was interesting at a couple levels, the politics and the policy. Let's talk about the policy for a moment. Um, it's good timing for them to talk. When they, abortion rights works for them. There's a lot of issues where the president, former President Trump polls much higher on immigration, the economy, uh, but abortion rights works for Biden. Coming down here days before the six-week law goes into effect, this is a major law, as we all know. This is gonna affect women throughout the Southeast, not just Florida. Uh, I read 7,000 women came from out of state last year to get abortions here because Alabama, Louisiana have complete bans on abortion. Uh, Georgia has a six-week bill. So it made sense for the president to make this a national issue and come down here. So it's nice for the Florida Democrats. I'm sure Jennifer loved it, you know, I saw her there. Uh, you know, it was a good feel good moment for them um, but uh, in play is a bit of an exaggeration Danny how important do you think uh, abortion will be as people go to the polls this November and will it be a motivator also for Republicans to go out and preserve what Republicans have achieved so far when it comes to abortion well I sure hope it is a motivator for the Republicans but I suppose it will be a motivator for the Democrats uh, Roe v. Wade being unturned, overturned, is exactly what needed to happen. There is no federal legislation for abortion. There's no laws Congress has passed. There's no laws the president has signed any of them. So the, law, the rules are abortion needs to be decided state by state. We're doing that. In December, there will be a ballot initiative to yeah. pass yeah. to allow basically abortion on demand up until birth. And I will tell you, it, it, the six-week bill we understand that abortion, a baby's heart is discernible at six weeks. Humans have one heart, one heart. If the heart's gone, you die. So if you have another heart in your body that's beating, that means there's another human being in your body. So I hope the Republicans understand that. I hope that we defeat the bill in November, but I suppose it will be a big issue. Uh, Jennifer, that's, I think, the Republican attack. Uh, Governor DeSantis has used that same phrase, uh, abortion on demand right up until birth. That's the way the governor is attacking this proposal on the ballot. W what's your take on that? Well, uh, even when that was the case, when we had that access in certain states, there was not a line of women at nine months pregnant waiting for an abortion. It's only if there's a medical emergency and something very, very wrong, and it's in a pregnancy that somebody wanted. So that, to me, is kind of a fallacy and something that's pulling people away from seeing that this is healthcare, period, and 
end of story. And it's private health care between a woman and her doctor for whatever reason it could be. It could be personal, it could be medical, it could be life or death. There are women who are dying, going septic, in other states that have enacted these bans. That's inhumane. You want to talk about, I mean, no offense, yes, I've been pregnant twice. I saw the fetus, I saw the heartbeat and the little bean when I was very early pregnant. I know that. But if something were to happen and I became septic and I lived in a state where I went and explained what was going on and got turned away, I mean, that's, that's what's more inhumane? Killing the woman or the embryo. And, and it's not even killing, it's taking care of the, what is medically necessary to be taken care of. Uh, Janelle, the polls show that uh, the abortion question on the ballot uh, is, is mostly popular, but doesn't have enough support here in Florida uh, to get to that 60%. And does that, to those voters that vote to uh, approve the petition, uh, the amendment, the proposed amendment on the ballot, does that help the Democrats in the fall? Well, I think that you will definitely um, see an impact on voter turnout, for sure. Um, whether it is just Democrats or a combination of Democrats and Republicans, that's something that we're going to be watching, obviously. 60% um, is a big threshold. So that's a hard bar to reach. Um, it's definitely an uphill climb. But because this is an issue that has broad support, it's not necessarily just a Democrats want it, Republicans don't. There is some nuance in the moderate middle. Um, you know, it does definitely stand a chance, but I think the bigger question is what is it going to do you know, on the ballot for Democrats versus Republicans. Yeah, is think? it going to hurt Rick Scott? Is it going to help candidates in CD13 where, you know, they're in an R plus six district? That's what I think is going to be, you know, the bigger impact, the broader impact. Because if you make those changes down ballot, you can legislate from Tallahassee eventually. So I, obviously people like Jennifer want this to pass, but right, you is, know. <laughs> yeah, and that's a, that is the big $64,000 question is, will it help the Democrats? Um, and we've seen in other states, this is, you know, these abortion measures have been in several states, right, since uh, 2022. The data really shows um, Republicans will vote for these measures, but not necessarily they're going to switch and then vote for, say, Debbie Mercosul Powell right. over Rick Scott. Mm -hmm. That's a lot more questionable. Democrats are really putting a lot on that. Debbie Mercosul Powell herself, this is like the single issue that she's basically running against yeah. Rick Scott on. And because, again, it pulls well for the Democrats. Other issues don't pull so well for them, so they're really emphasizing this. I think, interestingly, there's a couple polls that have come out since the uh, measure we know is going on the ballot. It shows 30 percent, or roughly a third of the voters, don't know how to vote on this. So so right. there's a public education campaign on both sides that will be going for the next six months to really find it. But, yeah, 60 percent is very hard to get.